We finished our study from the Bible. For the next couple weeks, I got this one and I have another one. It's just short little study from the Bible. The simple things that the Lord showed me. Today, Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. And when Jesus was entered to Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, that's a Roman soldier, in charge of about a hundred men, beseeching him. I mean, I need help. This is not a kind of our Father's heart in heaven. This is, Jesus is in a group of people, surrounded by people, the disciples, People touching him, people trying to stop him, trying to get their attention. And here is this Gentile, this Roman soldier. Oh, Jesus, sir. Is he standing? Is he kneeling? The Bible doesn't say. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth home sick of the pulse, grievously tormented. Not me, Lord. This Roman soldier of a hundred men, this Gentile, steps up to God in begging, interrupts the life and going and travel. Of Jesus for his servant not even one of his soldiers his servant how bad is his servant with the both grievously tormented where do you see the word torment that's the man in hell speaking to Abraham I am tormented in this flame. I am in torment in this place called hell. And this I'm sick, This Roman centurion approaches Jesus and said, My servant is extreme pain. And friend, they didn't have opioids or how he say it. They didn't have Tylenol. They didn't have pain medicine. You suffered. And you had potions and snake oils and witch doctors. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. So Jesus is in his travels. He, he's moving about this Gentile Roman soldier. Who knows if he's still in uniform? Don't know if he comes down and kneels before Jesus. Says, I've got a surge, a, a servant. Almost said surgeon. He is grievously tormented. And Jesus says, okay, here I go. I'll go heal him. Now that Gentile woman that, that will come up, he pulled her away. I mean, she goes, oh, son of David. That's not how you approach Jesus as a Gentile. He approached Jesus, Lord, you know what that is to a Roman centurion lord? That's honor. That's respect. You didn't just throw that word. I mean, we throw the word president. Like it don't mean anything. And many people, you know, we got a Democratic president, but it don't even mean nothing because it's a Democratic president. 
Friend, you wouldn't survive in these times. Friend, you would not survive in the days of Pharaoh with your attitude you have toward the leader of this nation. And Jesus says, I will come and heal him. And you would think about Jesus going one way and then he turns. Expecting the centurion to lead him to his house or the house of the servant. Like, we really got to tell God where to go and how to get there. But we do. But watch. The centurion answered and said, Lord, again, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. So evidently the servant at home is at the, the centurion's home. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the centurion's like, well, wait a minute, Lord. How valuable is that word, Lord? I am not worthy. Now, Jesus is not just some good teacher. Jesus is not just this faith healer. I, I, I would assume that the centurions had all kinds of people of authority at his house. I suppose that the centurions been at houses and public buildings of great authority for his position. He is telling the Lord God Jesus Christ, wait a minute. Stop. You are too high of authority You're not coming under my roof. That's too much to ask for you, Lord. Lord, who am I and who am I serving? That's, that's no way, man. Lord, my servant lieth home sick and opposedly, grievously tormented. What was he asking Jesus to do? That when Jesus answered, you will, I will come and heal him. And the saturnian's response is, you're not worthy to come on my, I am not worthy, excuse me. I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. What was the centurion asking? But speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. That's faith. You know what the centurion wanted to do? Jesus. Lord. Jesus. God. My servant lies at home sick and opposing. He is grievously tormented. He is in much pain. He expected Jesus to say, Get out of here. Leave me alone. You're a Gentile. What other response was there to be? He told the disciples when he sent them out, don't go the way of the Gentiles. He told that Phoenician woman to half read, uh, uh, no, 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 I come for the children of Israel, not the dead dogs. 
He assumed that the life of Jesus was primary around the Jewish people. There was a time, that I, I, I think they were Greeks, I forget what nationality they were. They came to Philip, they came to Andrew and said, can we have permission to go see Jesus? heard of a person who, who got sick and he calls the doctor's office and they're like we can't take you if your condition gets worse and you can't breathe go to the emergency room but our schedule's too booked we can't make an appointment there's nothing we can do for you that's <coughs> What the Saturia is expecting. Or. Must speak the word only. And my servant will be healed. He expected Jesus to say. Alright go home he's okay. He's well. There's two aspects. There's either. Rejection. Or speak. Never. Okay, let's go. But this man says, speak the word only. Jesus, Lord, you don't have to come. I'm not worthy. But you have enough authority. You have enough power you are maybe you believe God, God that all you have to do is say it this is the same God in Genesis 1 that spoke the world into existence let there be You know, he didn't go into materials and, uh, until he made man. Then he took man out of dust, the dirt of the ground. But the heavens and the earth and the sun, the moon, the stars and the animals and the trees and the grass. He didn't let there be grass. Let there be trees. Let there be fruit. Let the waters bring forth the, cat, uh, the, the birds and the and the fishes and let the ground bring forth you know all the animals that same God that said let there be this attorney say Lord just open your mouth it will happen This is the God that we pray to. This is the God that says, yes, I'll grant it. No, I will not do it. Or you're going to have to wait. I've got a prayer right now, and I have not been told no. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to wait. I'm impatient. We have the God, Jesus, God Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty, that has already moved events and places and people. I told God one time, I will never come to Florida. I'm in Daytona Beach, Florida right now. God moved me. Why? For one particular people, group of people, persons, I don't know. But I hope His will has been done. Herod wanted to see magic show. 
of Jesus. He thought, oh, I'm going to see Jesus. He'll perform some trick, some miracle, some sign. And he didn't do it. That's what Baptist churches are doing. That's what VBS is doing. Hocus Pocus when we pull the, the, the chicken out of the hat. Whatever they do. This centurion says, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord, you have the power and the authority, or I wouldn't say it, I wouldn't believe it. The response of Jesus shows the faith. This man says, just speak it. He's not tempting Jesus. He's not trying Jesus. He's not trying to catch him. He has a servant that is sick. He's asked Jesus to heal him. And then we get that Jesus said, okay, let's go. You know, wait a minute. Just say it. For I am a man under authority, as God is, as Jesus is. He's got twelve disciples. Having soldiers under me, about a hundred. I say to this man, go. Jesus says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Not every Christian does that. He goeth. He does what I tell him to do. And to another come. And he cometh. God will reach out to lost men. Come to Calvary. And believe on Jesus. And they don't. And my servant. And to my servant. Excuse me. Now, is this the servant that's sick? He said, I say, I have soldiers under me. I say to this man, make a soldier, go. To another one, another soldier, another man, come to my servant. Now, maybe he's got many servants, but is this the man that's sick? He does this. I mean, do this, excuse me. And he doeth it. I think that servant is the servant that is sick. And I think he's telling Jesus a roundabout way. I've got all these men under me. And I've got this servant. He's sick. And he doeth it. What I tell him to do. He's faithful like Joseph. Listen, I'm a man under, I'm a man over a hundred men, it's a journey. I got these men, I give them orders. But you, Lord, I may have these soldiers and these servants in my house. They may have come to my house with orders, and I said, well, go Tell Sergeant such and such. Uriah, here are written orders that this is your death. Sign it off to Joab. Now go. I want you to tell those captains come here. I got orders, I got assignment for those captains. Servant, 
I got guests coming over. I want that room cleaned up, everything put up to order, this house straightened out. I want to make sure we got enough supplies for my guests to come. Check our stock. And he do it. But you, Lord, I'm not worthy. As a centurion, I am not worthy that you come under my roof. And you have the power and the authority. Just say it. I mean, I say to my men, go. Come. Do. You can do the same thing. <clears throat> now look what he said. He said, go, one word. Come, one word. Do, one word. Look what he says to Jesus. But speak the word only. Jesus, all you got to do is say one word. And my servant shall be healed. Jesus, all you got to say is heal. Heal. That's faith. Because he gives us an example. One word. One word. One word. And he gives us one word. What, what he expected Jesus something to say. Heal. My servant. Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the boat. Grievously torment. And he expects Jesus. If he's going to respond. He expects Jesus to healed. Thank you, Lord. Have a good day. Sorry for interrupting you. But Jesus says, I will come and heal. Wait a minute. Now, what if Pilate Herod would say, Mr. Centurion, we're coming over to your house. He would order that servant. He would order, get everything right, clean it up. Now I'm going to get the white glove. And I'm, we're going to clean everything. We're going to check it. That house better be spotless. It better be proper. And it better be in order. Because Caesar's coming. Because Herod's coming. Because Pilate is coming. Lord Jesus... I'm not worthy. You think him to spec Pilate or Herod or Caesar? Say one word. Their one word would be war. Or thumbs down. Or thumbs up. That's not a word. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. Imagine God marveling. He is in an audience of Jews talking to a Gentile. And he said to them that followed, Jews, Hebrews, people of Judah, maybe the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and scribes, the disciples, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. Alright, that's good right there. Okay? There's been no great... We are eight chapters in math. I have not found... Now remember, John told us at the end of the Gospel of John, there were many things that Jesus done that were not recorded because there wouldn't be enough books to record. There's been more things up to Matthew chapter 8 that has not been recorded. Jesus says, there is great faith. God made the whale, he says, a great fish. No. Oh, here we go. Not in Israel. When Jesus was in his hometown, 
and he spoke about uh, uh, Naaman. When he spoke about that widow woman that Elijah helped, those were two Gentiles. He was uplifting and praising the Gentiles in front of the Jews. He turns around to the Jews, his people, he came unto his own, his own received him not. He turns to the Hebrews, Israelis, the, the people of Judah, the Jews, and he says, of all you people, this dumb dog has got more faith than all of you. I've not found such a great faith. And I found it in a Gentile. Oh, you know that brought attitude. You know that brought anger. You know that brought envy. I say unto you, many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out in other darkness, hell. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There are going to be Jews found in hell. The, uh, the, the lake of fire. Why? Because they didn't believe. They did not believe Jesus who he was. Religions don't believe who Jesus was or is. There are people who profess to be Christians who do not believe who Jesus is. And they will die in their sins and go to hell. And the man with a great face, Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. See the go? He said, listen, I got, I got soldiers under me. Go! And he goeth. And as thou hast believed, that's faith, so be it done unto thee. But it was his servant. Remember that man that was on the bed and was it three or four broke open the roof and lowered that man down? I forget, it was three or four. Jesus said their faith. He didn't say the man that was in the bed. He said their faith. We talk about faith, you know. God, believing God can do something for me. How about we believe in enough that God can do for someone else? That's what our prayers are to be. Let's say you know someone's sick in the hospital or sick at home. Do you have enough faith to ask God to heal that person? For God to heal that person, here's our story. And how would you like to get to heaven at the judgment seat of Christ and find out that your friend, your your relative, a church, someone at church, how, how would you like to find out that that person was healed not by the doctor not by they sleeping in bed resting I mean how about God healing that person you prayed for because you believe God can do it how's that I mean, people are getting sick and tired. 
But I'm praying for a wife. I believe God can do it. Now, there are times that my unbelief is not unbelief. It's patience. I, I believe God will do it. And I pray, am I hindering it? Is she hindering it? Is God hindering with patience? Or is Satan hindering? And whatever the hindrance is, I believe with faith that God will override that hindrance and make it so. I have seen God answer prayers, and my problem may be is, all right, he may have answered my prayer, but maybe it was somebody else that prayed and believed, and not me. We need to get praying and believing not for ourselves, but for others. And his servant was healed in the same cell hour. Meaning that, that centurion turned around and go. Left. But let's take what Jesus said. Go. He turned around and he go. Proper English would be he left, but he go. He go, sounds improper, but listen to me. He go like his soldier would go. All right, you got people under your authority, and they do what you tell them to do. You believe you are speaking to the Lord. Go. He didn't say, well, Jesus, wait right here, let me go check and see, make sure it happened. He didn't, or I, I you don't know if he's, he had any, but let's say he has some of his soldiers or men there, right there. All right, go run home and find out if he's healed. You didn't read that. That centurion believed God and God's word. Now when Jesus said, go, when that, sir, when that centurion come home, let's look at this, right? Let's look what he said. When he go, like Jesus told him to go, it's in proper English, I apologize. When he come home, He found that servant healed that Jesus do what he asked Jesus to do. Do you see how verse 13 worked out what he said in verse 9? You have to be careful what you say. Now remember... Rebecca told Jacob, said they're going to pull their daddy. They're going to deceive Isaac. And, and Jacob says, Mom, if Dad finds out I am Jacob and not Esau, he's going to curse me instead of bless me. And Rebecca is so quick with her mouth. But the, bless, the, the cursing be upon me, son. So Rebecca lies. She said, Jacob, go to my brother Laban, oh brother. I will send for thee. No, you won't. Because when you send Jacob to your brother, Rebecca, you die. And you never see Jacob again. God held you to your word. God held the centurion to his faith and to what he said in verse 9. Go, come, and do. He go from Jesus. Again, I apologize for the proper English. He come home to find his servant that Jesus do what he asked him to do. His servant was healed.
And then you see verse 14. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he didn't need to go into the centurion's house. The centurion's like, whoa, I'm not worthy. Now Peter is going to offer Jesus Peter's house so Jesus will have a place to stay. 